Good afternoon to everyone. I'm uh, Michał Gębicki. I'm uh, uh, working in uh, Lesser Evil and at the remote control productions as well. Uh, today I want to give you a little bit of an insight and hints on Kickstarter. This is pretty wide topic, so in the 45 minutes I guess we will not cover it all, right? But uh, uh, I want to focus on fundamentals. Um, uh, so to start with, a few words about my credibility, so you know that at least a little bit I know what I'm saying. Uh, so I've been working for video games industry since 2006. Uh, I've uh, been working previously in uh, CD Projekt, in Clubater, now I work for the Reveal. Uh, I've published um, roughly 18, even 20 games so far, multi-platform. In some of those cases, I did also Kickstarter campaigns for them as, as an important marketing bit of uh, their road to market. And lately, uh, I also um, uh, run six crowdfunding campaigns, all of them for video games, uh, actually five of them for video games and one for uh, a board game. So um, I can say I got some reasonable amount of experience and reasonable amount of uh, uh, also uh, like the in-field experience from running those campaigns that I would like to share with you today. Um, also, I encourage if it that let's try at least to be an interactive session, maybe. So if you feel you have questions on the go, like feel free to add, ask them or raise the hand, and I'll try to uh, try to pick up these people, and we can we can have a chat anytime. Uh, so uh, first, the assumption that I made after I did all these six kickstarters, it's like so exhausting to run them. Really, like you need to take care. You need to take it under consideration that running a Kickstarter campaign is almost like running a marathon, but you need to be really quick, right? So keep on pace from sprint. And um, it is an, an often a kind of a mistake, I would say, assumed by uh, especially indie developers that are kind of like small organizations that they can carry out with Kickstarter campaign just like that, like, you know, like in a couple of weeks or so, do it left hand, right side, or just by, you know, spending a couple of hours, this is a bad assumption. You know, you, you need to spend really a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of working hours, and build a, a, a team of, at least I would say, a couple of people working on a Kickstarter campaign to ever think about the success. Uh, and don't, feel, don't think you can do it alone. Probably there are some exceptions from that rule, but, uh, but I encourage to do it always in the team. Uh, but the most important question at the beginning is usually what for, right? So, um, obvious thing, it's right because you want to raise money, so uh, raise funds, get some money. That's what everyone is running this Kickstarter, at least on the definition. Because lately, it's rather for building community. Uh, that is more important, and I think that is more achievable goal. Raising funds, yes but uh, it has some implications that I will tell later. But uh, building community, uh, that's, the, my opinion, the best outcome of running Kickstarter. After a successful campaign, you will always get from a couple of hundreds to even a couple of thousands of dedicated funds that are not just uh, like promising they will buy, but already bought your game or, or a product, right? So they are invaluable source for the future uh, asking about the opinions, uh, being ambassadors, bringing good words. Those guys are invested in you already, right? So having them on board, yeah, I think it's uh, one of the most important uh, things coming out of Kickstarter. And thirdly, uh, it's to generate hype. Uh, this is, is very important, though I need to say Kickstarter is not good for media. So if you think media will be interested in the fact that you're running Kickstarter, you're wrong. Media doesn't care about you running Kickstarter, unfortunately, unless you are, of course, like, I don't know, Musk or someone like running next Tesla or whatever. But uh, for your indie games, that's going to be a wall, that uh, impenetrable wall of ignorance, uh, I mean, like silence, and they don't care, right? But on the other hand, it's very important bit for your marketing teams or for your communication teams, because this is short period of 30 days, and I'm talking here about the core campaign, where you can focus all the attention of everyone in the team and outside on your product. So uh, this is the moment where you can get a lot of buzz from community. Uh, influencers are a good source of that buzz. Uh, media only if you are doing very good, which we will also 
say what is the definition of doing good later on. Um, so what's the first step? Let's say you chosen one of the three goals uh, from the list that I've showed earlier. So now you have to have a clear goal, right? Uh, what are you running this campaign for? Uh, if you're running it for money, that we already said before, uh, or you're running it for fame. Deciding early on that is very important because you don't, uh, you need to manage your expectations. If you're clearly aiming just for fame, which of course I mean like buzz marketing of your product, right? Not just your personal fame. Uh, it implicates a completely different approach to what is going to be achieved uh, after the campaign. If you do it for the budget and you are actually really need to generate the money that you will invest in your game, that is also a completely different campaign. So these two are kind of separate campaigns and you need to decide before you run, not on the run, because then it is too late already, right? Um, also, deciding whether you are um, uh, f gathering the funds to fully fund your game and build the project from the scratch or just getting funds to, in to, in to increase its value is also an important decision that you need to make before you actually start the campaign. Why, you would ask, is like, because if let's say in your funding goal you say you are gathering on money on this campaign because you want to fund your game, uh, then you provide a very long description of the game with all the stuff, and then you ask for 15,000 euro. That's hard, hard to kind of like believe that you're gonna fund the game for 15,000 euro, right? So uh, that's why you need to decide. If you go big, the, the number needs to be big at the same time, but also it will in, inflict you to ask for a bigger money. You need to deliver proofs to believe for your community, because seldomly anyone will believe that for 15k you can build a full game later on. Um, when you are preparing for a Kickstarter, uh, there is an, a lot of work to be done earlier. Um, I have three phases uh, that I always say are towards the Kickstarter. So there's a pre-Kickstarter campaign, the core campaign, and then the post campaign, which we'll see on the next slide. In that first pre-Kickstarter pre campaign, the most important part is the research. The input of the data you need to gather uh, before you actually start your own. Don't do it just because you think their idea is great, right? Check if there is something similar already on Kickstarter. Kickstarter is fairly transparent and it's very easy to look for the products. If not uh, similar to your genre or by category or simply by um, uh, browsing the catalog. Uh, there are other services is there like uh, kick track where you can also check the archived uh, campaigns how they went what kind of updates they they uh, prepared what video was uh, used for the promotion of a specific game right uh, i assume most of you will try to uh, do a kickstarter for a video game so like browsing this category there researching what worked what didn't work is an important part of a preparation for the actual launch of uh, of the game also, uh, one of the most trickiest part of preparing yourself for the Kickstarter campaign is uh, a proper uh, definition of the pledge goals, the funding goal, the big one, right? The pledges and the awards. These three variables are the the, the combinations of them are the key to your success, right? The first thing we a little bit covered. So, asking goal, the funding goal needs to be. Uh, adjusted to what you're asking for. If you're asking for a full development of the game, you need to ask for, I don't know, 100,000 euro, for example, right? Uh, or at least 50 or something, right? It needs to be parallel to the scope of the, of the work there. If you are asking just for 15K or 25K, that means you are rather asking uh, backers to help you finish the game, right? Which is completely different. Um, if you are uh, creating the pledges, also remember that it, the rules here are very similar to e-commerce, actually. The less, the better, right? Don't produce uh, 12 pledges or 25 pledges because that is too complicated. And then you divert the attention of the possible backers onto too many free, uh, different pledges. They will try to compare them and sooner or later they will have doubts whether uh, this pledge is better or this pledge is worse, right? So you are distracting them from the decision they need to make. So I would suggest four, five pledges is just good enough, right? And uh, and most important element of that is also take your time, right? Um, I often met with the situation where uh, 
what the decision we're gonna run Kickstarter and actually starting the Kickstarter is like a month time or something, like a couple of weeks, like, hey, yeah, let's do it and then we do it because, well, we just think it's a, such a good idea to do it. This doesn't work like that, and at least not now. There were some like old good romantic times in the past where you were able to run the campaign just like that, right? But uh, they are long gone. Now it's a uh, lot about uh, strategy, preparation, and time invested into uh, pre-marketing your campaign. This phase, the first one, pre-campaign, uh, I would say the minimum is three months, but it's really, if, if you already, already have a community, you have backers that you can drive with you, uh, you're well known, you have lots of marketing and spent already lots of time on, on, in, on like making your brand aware uh, and, and, uh, and visible. I would say six to eight even is, is okay, right? I've seen campaigns that were running as a pre Kickstarter campaigns for years, right? And those were the most effective ones. Uh, it's fairly easy because then in that pre Kickstarter campaign, you can already create your little business card on the Kickstarter, which is kind of like a pre Kickstarter of your campaign, and you can channel all your activities on that pre Kickstarter campaign page so you get followers. Uh, later on, those followers are convertible onto the backers when you launch. And your ultimate goal, uh, that is also one thing that I need to mention, is you need to get funded within the first 24 hours, maybe 48, right? Uh, so that is the moment where you need to have a 100% of your goal, the, the original one, uh, funded. Of course, well, you, you can wait until the 30 days, but if you don't, in the first uh, 48 hours, backers will faint, they will lose interest, some of them will hesitate. They need that proof of social, uh, um, that, that the campaign is successful. The money drives money, so if they see that uh, in the first hours you got 100 or 105% of your campaign funded, they will uh, generate you much more than 100% uh, funding. Now, that is why we always aim for the funding goal to be a little bit lower than what you expect. Let's say if you aim for 100,000 euro, right? then the funding goal should be something like 50, 60,000, let's say. And of course, if you feel you could uh, deliver that big amount in the first 48 hours of your original campaign. Then we go to the campaign, and this is that what usually everyone thinks is just about Kickstarter. So this is this 30 days where you press uh, start button, the campaign goes on, and for 30 days you're on the Kickstarter and you are actually uh, gathering pledges. This campaign, out of these 30 days, the most important days are the six days. So first three and last three. Uh, anything between them is sort of like a cold plateau, and nothing is happening over there. Uh, it's flat, right? Uh, and that philosophy is also important because it means that for the first three days, you will get a little bit more natural, organic boost from being on the main Kickstarter page, Maybe you will receive this uh, Projects We Love Award which feature, which is also helping out a little bit. You will get more attention because you are easier browsable on the page. And then the same story will go for another last three days where you will get the uh, notifications sent to people that are following your project. And in the middle, the 27 sort of days in between, this is only up to you what will happen in these times. And Kickstarter is not supporting you anyway in these 27 days. So the only traffic you will get in the middle of the campaign is the one you can generate. And that is why the most important element is like bring your own backers, right? So never start the campaign on the Kickstarter before you gather your own group of people that can help you to fund the, uh, the game. Uh, and then you can exploit them in a way through that 27 middle days of campaign. When the campaign finishes, it doesn't mean that the uh, uh, gathering pledges finishes as well. Because then there is a post-campaign activity. It's less uh, used for video games, more used for uh, board games, but it's also an important uh, part where you can upsell a lot. If you use uh, <coughs> uh, backer kits, if you upgrade pledges, give some uh, upgrades to uh, rewards, you can still sell and keep on late pledging people that will still pay you actually uh, the money and this will be your store, right? You will be able to pre-sale your game up to its very launch or sometimes even after, right? When, when, when it's another source of revenue for you like Steam or, uh, or any other platform. 
Um, <coughs> so that's more or less what we covered uh, uh, earlier in, uh, in the description of these phases. Uh, what I outline here is like the key performance indicator, let's say a KPI at that first phase of pre-Kickstarter campaign is building the followers on your uh, pre-Kickstarter page. Um, I'm sure most of you probably seen it. It's a very simple kind of a business card with a little icon, a, a sh very short description. And then uh, if you click notify me on the launch button, you kind of subscribe for the moment where the Kickstarter will inform you that the campaign started. So everything in the first year, three or six months that you have started needs to be channeled on this page. And you need everyone to subscribe for that notification. Why? Well, because this is the best co source for conversion later on. Uh, the more you get, uh, the better, of course. The important is that, on average, because it varies from campaign to campaign, but about 20% of those that uh, follow up will convert as a backers in the first uh, 24, 48 hours. So that is the math you need to do, right? So now if you know this 20%, you can calculate how many people following your pre-Kickstarter campaign you need to have in order to get your goal funded in this first 48 hours, right? Um, and this gives you also a answer to how long should I run my pre-Kickstarter campaign. If let's say you have 2,000 followers on your uh, pre-Kickstarter campaign and on average they will pledge $20, right? You know how much you can expect uh, when 20% of that group will convert in the first 48 hours, right? Um, the rest may convert, but doesn't need to convert. They will convert only if the campaign is successful in the first 48 hours, and they will just do slow conversion uh, in a time. But the 20% should do it immediately. Um, in that moment, in the pre-Kickstarter pre pre campaign, uh, what you need to do is like to start already doing the Kickstarter campaign. So let's assume you already need to have a Steam page, right, uh, before. On that Steam page, you need to up keep on pushing the updates that you are actually going to run this campaign. You need to prepare a little video that will tease that you are going to tease the campaign, right? So it's like a little bit building from the little bricks by bricks, building a tension that one day in, in, in a time, you may not even reveal that time, uh, you're going to launch the campaign. And all that goes down to like building these subscribers uh, on your Kickstarter page. So at that moment, you push the button, they all get notified. Um, then comes that moment of truth, right? So then you're ready, you have your page set up. Let's say you build already the uh, followers uh, number in, in, in a satisfactory amount. Now you need to start uh, the campaign. Um, First of all, you need to have a couple of good assets in order to engage them in the, in, the, in the product and to present the product properly. There's two video assets that are key here. Uh, you can do more, but the two is the minimum. So one is the so-called so talking head, right? Uh, it used to be more uh, important in the past now because of the attention of people to talking heads are dropping, it's less important, but still it is necessary. So this is more or less some sort of a personal message from a creator to the backers. It is important because it shows your engagement, it also shows um, the person behind the campaign, and that's what backers like, right? They like to feel there is, this is not an anonymous corporation that is super rich and is asking for their money, right? Remember about this, uh, concept that this is crowdfunding campaign, so the assumption is that you are not having money and you are asking for the money, people. So if you are showing yourself as a publisher or as a super extra rich organization, they're going to ask, like, so why can't you fund yourself, right? So uh, this talking head video needs to be showcasing and, and underlining what is your uh, philosophy about this product, what is the game about, why are you are running this Kickstarter, and why do you actually need the help of the backers. The second one is much easier because it's just a video game trailer, right? And you also need to have it, uh, because of course everyone is buying the games only when they see them in the action, right? Not having a video game trailer is of absolutely no go, right? Nobody will uh, read the text or just watch the static uh, screenshots. You need to have something compelling. It can be exactly the same trailer as you 
want to launch for your game, so it doesn't have any philosophy towards it, but it needs to be there. You need to be able to rotate them, so when you start campaign, I guess better is to start with the talking head at the beginning and the video somewhere in, in, in the middle of your uh, Kickstarter page. After a couple of uh, hours later, you can exchange them, right? Because when the campaign is running, the, 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 the main video on top should be the eye-catching thing, right? And we assume that the first 48 hours are people interested. Later on, there are coming just people that, are, that heard this campaign about and they want to see the game, not the talking head anymore, right? Um, with video games, also, uh, I would not recommend going without any playable code, right? So you need to have at least, um, the best thing, of course, is to have a demo, uh, because now nobody really trusts the games that you can't uh, play. Um, that is why if, parallelly to that, you are running a campaign for your game, and you are closing to a Steam, for example, demo festival, it's always worth uh, combining the two events together, right? So either to start uh, a uh, Kickstarter campaign in the very same moment you launch it for the Steam demo festival, so you don't need to do the job twice, right? Uh, or to start the Kickstarter earlier and then attend the Steam demo festival. Not the other way around, because if the demo is already available, it kind of loses this exclusivity flavor, right? So it's not going to be a, a asset especially made for the Kickstarter and will be much uh, less effective. Um, and uh, some other hints, like you should, at the beginning, you have uh, your main goal, you have pledges. Um, don't show the stretch goals. Uh, the stretch goals are these targets you have, the goals that you have when you're going to get funded. Showing them at the beginning is a huge mistake because, first of all, you already assume you're going to get it, uh, so some people might be offended by it. The second is like they might see that they are not interested and that will again cause them to hesitate. Um, and also because you are losing a, a very important tool when the campaign is going to be slowly running to an end, right? When the campaign is funded already, and you need to upsell, so you need to generate more revenue than you just planned in the beginning. The stretch goes out for that, right? So they need to be revealed one by one and only when the campaign is funded, not earlier. So keep, it, keep them secret until that very moment where you get the message, it is funded. Uh, you, never, you can never be silent. That is another thing. The moment you start Kickstarter campaign, that means Ideally, for video games, almost every day you should produce an update on the on the Kickstarter. Uh, the minimum is 20 updates in the 30 days, so like almost uh, every day. But I would I would I would assume like every day, even a short message is is better than nothing, right? Also, don't just post like. Uh, Oh, we got 5%. Oh, we got 6% now. Oh, we got 7 now, right? Because that's boring. That nobody, I mean, you can post about first 5% or 10, right? But don't do it every time, right? The content you run in the updates is the content about the product. That is for the people that, okay, they pledged. That's one, one type of people that will read it. But it's also for all those people that didn't pledge but are following the campaign. So the more updates you produce, the higher the conversion is from people that are in the back end just watching the campaign and still hesitating. And that's going to be much higher number than the backers, right? So if you monitor carefully these two numbers, you will soon see that you got, let's say, 10, 20 backers, but 200, 300 people following the campaign. The more updates you produce, the faster you get the goal funded, these two, 200 observing people will be converting into, uh, into, into backers at the end. Um, there's lots of other tools for engaging communities over there, uh, not just updates. Of course, updates need to be eye-catching, they need to have some sort of a video. Best if you could uh, show something extra from the game that is not already available in the demo. Uh, one thing that works is also Ask Me Anything session. You can do it on Reddit, for example. Reddit is also good for spreading some news about that, but be careful because they ban usually for that stuff, right? So um, need to be very uh, uh, guerrilla style kind of uh, activity. So uh, anything on the way that can help to get some sort of a buzz about what you're doing is the things you need to be constantly doing. Um, 
the moment you stop publishing updates, that's a clear message to everyone that the campaign is going to be failed, right? And that, will co that can also cause people to withdraw the pledges. That is also a very important message. So even if you are already 100% funded, remember they can withdraw also if they see that you are not active there, right? Um, that is why it's worth trying. And then at the very end, after you, 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 you finish these 30 days, uh, as mentioned earlier, you can do uh, several activities on, the, on your Kickstarter campaign, which is still alive, because you can still post updates there, still community is there, so this uh, couple of hundreds or thousands of people there are following this Kickstarter page. Sometimes they don't even follow your Steam page, they follow only this Kickstarter page. This is also worth mentioning that usually on the Kickstarter demography of the community is that it's mostly from the US and a little bit from Western Europe, right? Uh, but it's US and they treat that all this, all sorts of informations about the game, the product they funded should be on the Kickstarter page. So don't fall to that uh, strategy that campaign is finished and now we can only update it on the Steam because you will get lots of angry people uh, like sort of posting different comments that they are not updated on the regular basis, right? Um, and uh, to talk about a little bit about metrics as well. So as I said earlier, so the first, uh, let's say, top of the funnel is like you build the mass reach, right? You try to reach through newsletters, you try to reach through Steam, you try to reach through all your databases, you build the best traffic. Then out of that, 10 to 15% will convert onto people following your, uh, your pre-Kickstarter uh, page. Out of that, again, 20, maybe 15 to 20% will finally convert to backers. So you see that the funnel is definitely very thin, right? So the, the, the more you get at the very beginning, the, the better, because later on it's just gonna be limiting with every time. I seldomly see in the situation opposites, right? So let's say you started the campaign and suddenly people are swarming to it, right? No, it's always like limiting with a, with a time. Uh, another thing, like uh, I said at the beginning, it is difficult and uh, time consuming to run the Kickstarter. Also remember, it is very expensive. Uh, this is one of the most expensive ways of getting money, right? So um, assume that, let's say 1525 I said here, but I, I've seen much more, will be the actual cost of this campaign. That's everything from uh, buying media, buying advertisements, uh, also another 10% on top of that will be taken by the platforms, by the payment uh, uh, um, operator as well, right? So uh, this campaign is not gonna be for free, right? So if you asked for, I don't know, 20,000 euro, right? And it's exactly the amount you need, you will never get it, right? So you need to always plan on top of that 30%, 50 to be on the secure side if actually you are running this campaign just for getting the money, not for getting bus or uh, uh, community attention. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, of course, uh, uh, the more you invest, the higher chances you get uh, for the actual bigger goal that you're gonna get at the end. So if you are aiming for a campaign of a couple of hundreds of thousand euro or dollars, right? That means that you need to first, before you start, secure this 25% of this amount on your account to be able to get this money, right? Uh, without it, it will not happen, right? So you won't just like run campaign, get one million euro just from posting on your own Facebook, right? Um, so that's definitely worth remembering. Um, plan your work in the team. Uh, it's very important again because uh, this is a full-time job. Uh, usually out of these six Kickstarter I was running, I was working with two, three people on top of them. And it took us, I would say, at least half of, of, of our daily, uh, of our day job time, right? So if you are a developer, you are running a campaign, you are, you are developing the game, you would need like, you know, a day to be 24 hours, right? Which is, oh, I mean, much longer because you won't be able to do all the three things together. So try to uh, secure uh, some sort of a team that can be doing it, at least for that 30 days, right? pre kickstarter campaign is something different. This can be done by all the team, right? And or by occasion in a way. But the 30 days, you need to have these two people, three people working full time on it. Providing the providing the content, uh, updating the Kickstarter page, working on it because um, because simply it's a hell of a work. Uh, 
it can be streamlined if you pre 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 prepare earlier, of course, right? So if you pre-record or pre-write the posts, um, preparing like these 20 updates earlier and adjusting them to the pace of the campaign, that will uh, streamline the process. But it, of course, you need to be also reactive, so you can, it's not, not always you can prepare things that are, uh, uh, you can foresee things or will happen, and you need to be also very reactive. Don't work alone, try to get some help. Uh, usually, I worked with, uh, uh, at least with IPR agencies for the territories, I believed, believed that will be a little more responsive because of my product. Uh, when I was analyzing the wish list for the game, I could tell that this is a specific territory where I already have some sort of a community, so this will be responsive. Running a de dedicated com campaign for that territory was helping to stimulate the backers from it. So, uh, so basing just upon an organic reach simply is not enough. Having more uh, power, uh, more uh, ammo to shoot is always good. Um, so to summarize, because I think we are slowly uh, coming to an end. Uh, so to exceed the funding goal, you would need to have the stretch goals, right? Uh, the very first funding goal is easy. To get it uh, um, exceeded, you need to prepare an extensive amount of stretch goals. The stretch goals needs to be achievable. So also, like if like the main campaign goal is I don't know ten, let's say, right, uh, thousand euro or dollars, your first stretch goal cannot be twenty thousand, right? Because it's like the, everyone who will see it will already know that it's unachievable. They need to be close to each other, uh, especially the first three of them, right? So let's say fifteen. Uh, 20, 25, right? This, this is doable for the community. They can mobilize, they can call each other and try to achieve these goals. If the first goal is too far away, simply you will not uh, go over your 100% uh, funding. Continuously update the page. Uh, as, uh, as I said earlier, being silent means that you failed and you are not ready. And, um, and, and well, and simply importantly, it's like uh, never lose hope, right? Because I, when I was running those campaigns, especially in the middle of it, you can see that it's really like getting flat, right? So you get two, five pledges, right? And nothing is happening. And you're doing a lot of work, you're pushing, but the pledges are not coming. Don't worry. Also, look at the back end and see what the, what the number of followers is. If the number of the followers is growing, that is also good. That means that they wait for the last three days to convert. If it's like growing and it's an, uh, an a decent amount, and you can again calculate that 20% of that followers that are waiting for the last three days will fund you, that's good enough. But if you see they are not following and there's no more of them coming, that means uh, sometimes maybe it's better to make a decision and stop the campaign, uh, confess that you are unable to finish it, and restart from the beginning all the process, rather than continuously try to die until the last 30 days, right? Uh, and that's about it uh, on my side. And I wonder if any one of you would have any questions, maybe your own experience with Kickstarter. Yeah. You have the microphone there on the, in the beginning, on the middle. Yeah. So, First question, uh, yeah, for a small studio that is just like let's say res recently created and has uh, it's starting to develop uh, their first their first game. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, w would you recommend to or, or is it possible to outsource this kind of uh, work to mm -hmm. prepare for a campaign? Is it? I mean, is it possible or is it a good idea? Well, yes, they are dedicated companies, so-called Kickstarter agencies, right? That can do, they can run the campaign for you, right? But first, they're not going to do it for free. So again, if you're a starting uh, studio, I was assuming that rather you probably would like to uh, get money more for yourself and then not pay everyone, right? So on the middleman, because then the middleman will devour even more than 30% of the funding goal, right? So yes, in a way, it makes sense. If you aim really high, you can find the companies that can do it, either like consult you on uh, preparing the landing page for a little fee, which is good, because that's always an experience you get from someone. You can hire a, 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 an agency that is only specializing in driving traffic. That's another agency type, right? And that's 
even easier because that's the CPC campaign that you need simply fund with the budget. Uh, but I wouldn't fully go into giving someone like the task, like go and do it for me, right? Because that will also cause you lots of work. Nobody will do it for you because it's your game, right? It, you, you will describe it best, you will create the assets, right? So I would say having them as a consultant, yes, but having them as a full-time doer of the campaign, I would not recommend that. Okay, cool. And the second one, if I may? Sure, go ahead. Um, yeah, in what stage? of the development should you consider uh, starting this pre-campaign? Uh, that's what I've said with the demo. So you need to have uh, at the stage where you are able to show something publicly, right? So to show sort of a, uh, either a demo uh, or a prototype if it's good enough, right? It, it needs to be good enough to be playable by, by unskilled gamers, right? So it needs to be stable at least, right? doesn't need to be full game. It could be anything between vertical slice and demo mm. sort of, right? Uh, but it needs to be uh, easy to uh, execute, right? Uh, because then, you know, most, most of the backers are not gamers, like super gamers, right? So they need to have something stable, uh, playable, yet appealing enough, right? Um, for example, if you have only tutorial part of your game or at the beginning, uh, I wouldn't show it now, right? Because, you know, it's boring, right? So you need to show something from the middle of the game, let's say, right? So this implicates when you would start. So also another, another uh, perspective on that is I would start when you already have a little bit of a wish list or followers, right? Not when you, so you need to have at least a Steam page running, the coming soon page, at least a couple of hundred followers, anything, right? Sort of your own social media like Discord, and a playable. This is the moment where you can start thinking about it, right? Uh, so let's say, I don't know, beta moment? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, perfect, thank you. Yep. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, okay. Uh, so mm -hmm. what you said yes. before is about campaign, because I thought the question was about Pre, when we can start pre-campaign yeah. period? Oh, the pre-kickstarter campaign. Yeah. Oh, yes, pre-kickstarter campaign you can actually start uh, when you have a Steam page. Uh, you don't need to have playable, of course, right? Because you don't need to, I mean, you need to have a Steam page and you need to, for, and I assume that for the Steam page you would need to have some sort of a trailer and a couple of screenshots and the game description. That's good enough to start, right? Uh, it simply will take you slowly, right? For the actual start of the campaign, when you already have the pledges, right? You need to have a playable to, 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 to allow people that will like land on your landing to have something to play on, right? So yeah, that, 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 that was, uh, so yes, thanks for uh, clearing it up. Right? Uh, okay, and um, another question. Uh, I don't want to be a pessimistic, but what if we failed to deliver? Mm -hmm. What are, so there are some legal consequences of that? No, no legal consequences. No, that, that, that's the good part, I would say, or amazing part of, of Kickstarter that, uh, oh, unless, what, what doesn't mean what you fail. If you fail to finish the, the I mean, if you fail to get the pledges and... Uh, no, I mean to fail to, to deliver the game. deliver a product. Like something uh, happened, uh, pandemia or whatever, war. Yes, yes, you don't, well, technically you don't need to deliver. There's no implications for that. Because this is crowdfunding campaign, so it's, a, it's not a store, right? Of course, I don't encourage it, because that's the worst what you can do, right? You get the money and you don't deliver the game. That's, a, that's, a, well, that, that, that's the tough way to go, right? But technically speaking, this is a part of a risk of, a, of, a, of, a, of being a backer, right? You back something that is not finished, and that there is only a soft promise that you deliver, that you will deliver it. That's why not the time, so you can deliver it later than you say, and there is no implications from that. Okay, thank you. Is there time for one more? Uh, yes, even two. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Hi. Um, so, uh, in your experience, is there uh, like a, p a few particular genres of games that the Kickstarter community likes in, in terms of what they favor? You mentioned board games. I've heard in, in, a, in a few places that, for, for instance, uh, action RPGs are not that favorable. There's not that many people who back ARPGs on uh, on Kickstarter, so like maybe it's not a good decision. Like, just can you yeah. share your experience? Uh, it's usually that that's that 
de depends, right? The answer is that, but uh, what, what I can say from my experience is that one of the key elements for uh, being a successful uh, Kickstarter campaign is having a appealing visual graf graphics, meaning, right? So the better looking the game is that mean people are buying there with eyes, right? Uh, for example, all this, uh, 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 anime style uh, or say manga style games that are semi or not super successful on on uh, Steam, right? They tend to gather a lot of money on on Kickstarter because this is a very specific community there. Any kind of games uh, that have a rich lore, also, uh, right? So you know, if you have a simple arcade game. That's not no, no not good one, right? But if you have a game with a characters, with a world where you can show the factions, where you can talk about the, the different uh, uh, heroes, right? Show them. This is appealing because that also gives you any content to write for that 30 days, right? I mean, you know, if you have like a game where you just I don't know, like a platformer, what? 20 or 30 updates you can do about it, right? Pretty not much. So, so a content-rich games, uh, good-looking ones. Also, the originally looking ones. That's another uh, goal. So, if you have like, uh, like like one of your key features of your game is like a unique visuals, that's a good uh, uh, that's a good feature to show uh, on on a Kickstarter. Um, also, I would avoid any controversial things, uh, meaning that this is uh, a specific community. So, if you go too much into I don't know a violent game, right, or or, or a difficult game, talking about super difficult stuff, then it's also not not the best to found. But if you have a game that is, for example, socially engaged somehow, right, or it touches the topics that are less commercial, then on the other hand, this community, uh, which I mean, the Kickstarter backers, they are more keen to support such games. Thus, the games that are not super uh, destined to be super commercially successful can get reasonable amount of money on Kickstarter. Thanks. Hello. Hi there. Thank you for your presentation. It was very good. Uh, I have a question about uh, making funnel. Uh, I mean, what percentage I should put in uh, promoting Steam and what percentage I would put in promoting Kickstarter in pre campaign and campaign? Mm -hmm. uh, that's a very good question because that's also one of the uh, controversies uh, that you should, as a I don't know, like a CEO of the indie studio, consider, um, because usually you have a limited funds, right? Um, uh, well, we all have, but also, but indies especially, right? So unfortunately, it's like through all the period of the Kickstarter campaign, you should concentrate on pushing all the money to the Kickstarter, or either the pre-Kickstarter pre page or finally to the backers. That means you are not spending it on Steam at the same time, right? Uh, which, in a way, you are losing, because, of course, you can then try to convert the traffic from Kickstarter to Steam page by saying, wish this as that, but that's one more step, right? So usually, we'll be losing some sort of, uh, of a traffic. Um, so this is the decision to be made uh, when you will run the Kickstarter, and that's why I encourage to run it after you already set up some sort of a funnel for your game, which is an organic one, right? So you start with Steam page, you start with promoting, going full on the on the indie uh, on the on the Steam page, and then you 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 launch your Kickstarter campaign when you have the fundamentals, fundamentals, right? Uh, because through all that period of at least for that 30 days, you should concentrate 100% of your uh, spendings on advertising just on Kickstarter, right? Mm -hmm. You can calculate a little bit like how much you can invest by what is the average pledge. And this is another problem for indies that, let's say, the indie games usually cost, what, $20, right? 15 to $20. So your pledge on average will be $20. Uh, that means that if you get uh, 100 people, that's what, 2,000, right, you can invest? Uh, I mean, 2,000, that's all the overall amount they will pay, right, so in the pledges. So uh, trying to uplift the sales is very important on Kickstarter. Building the pledges that they will play, pay something more than just the game. And here you have another challenge. So if you want to build uh, pledges uh, to be more uh, interesting, you would need to add extra content to them. And then you would need to add them digitally because you don't want to go into the physical products, right, and ship the one art book to Columbia, for example, right, uh, for 100 euro. So this is a bit of a, like the, the math. But what I would say, during the Kickstarter campaign, fully go into the Kickstarter. In the pre-Kickstarter, you can, uh, you know, adjust it up to your 
um, expectations, right? What do you want? About the content, uh, imagine we have like half a year, six month Steam, mm -hmm. and there is trailer, there are some screenshots from the game, but we need a playable version, yeah. and uh, I heard some things that are not r mm, right to in my head uh, about playable version. Would, would it be best to have playable version before Kickstarter or after? For, right? So before. Before, before Kickstarter, you can prepare a video trailer specially crafted for Kickstarter, for teasing that you're gonna go for a Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. And it could be uh, finished with call to action, like uh, visit my pre-Kickstarter campaign and follow it. I'll let you know when it starts, right? But then when you start the Kickstarter campaign, you should already have your demo available. At, at preferably at the very beginning, so the first day, or you can be a bit in the middle, right? Mm -hmm. uh, somewhere as well. But uh, also bear in mind that um, there is a risk that then if you will not have it at the beginning, but at the middle, some people will play it and they will re uh, withdraw with their pledges, right? So that's mm -hmm. why it's better to get already those that seen the, uh, the crowdfunding campaign, they play it and they like it, right? Imagine a situation that we are not calling vertical slice or demo, but uh, early access. Mm -hmm. And you would like to uh, mm, uh, earn some money on Steam. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to uh, show them demo first, mm -hmm. but you would like have demo as pre uh, early access and make money on that. But uh, having it before like on started, it will be some collision in it. So what would you recommend? Ooh, that was complicated case, <laughs> by the way. But um, well, you know, it's like, um, this is just an advice, right? You can start the campaign without a demo, and you can run the Kickstarter without a demo. Like the last campaign I did was with when there was no demo for the game. So there was no playable, and we managed, right? We got like 25,000 euro, right, for the game that is now being released in early access mm -hmm. after, the, after the Kickstarter is finalized. And then what we promised is that all the people that uh, backed us or got some pledges would get some sort of an exclusive access earlier. This works well, but, for, but that is a risky way, right? So Simply maybe maybe we'll uh, give them some gameplay would be okay? Yeah, yeah, or at, at least that. At least some raw gameplay, uncut, so they can see the game. Because it's like, especially with the more complex Con, uh, more complex games, right? The last one I was making was simply, but it's a game about the drones, right? So like you, you fly the drones, so the concept is very easy to understand from a short footage. But if you are building, I don't know, like an action RPG game, right? So you need to uh, prepare, you need, it's, it's hard to understand just from the written description on a couple of screenshots, what are the mechanics? Mm -hmm. So yes, preparing more uh, gameplay focused uh, trailer uh, is, is, a good, is a good alternative if you can't deliver the, the build, uh, playable build earlier, right? Thank you. And the last question, uh, what if I, uh, we don't achieve the pointed amount of money that we would like to gather? What then? There's, there's a couple of checkpoints. So first one is that 72 hours. So if in the first three days you don't get uh, at least 30%, that means you're not gonna find it, it, it's rather gonna be failed, right? Are, are we losing those money when the campaign is finished? Or yes, yes. yes, I mean, if you don't get 100%, it's like all or nothing, right? So, mm -hmm. so if in the first three days you don't get at least 30%, that means it's not gonna work out or it's gonna be super struggle, right? And to you recommend validate. to finish the campaign then? And then you should make a decision whether you want to continue or cancel. I would advise cancelling rather than finishing and going into this um, uh, torture of uh, waiting 27 days to uh, announce that you failed, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so it's better to cancel, uh, confess that it didn't went well. And remember also uh, running the Kickstarter campaign a couple of times for the same game is not that bad, right? Okay. Of course, if you're not like, I don't know, Activision or something and that's going to impact your PR, then yes. But, but if you're an indie, it's fine. Like you didn't manage the first time. You say every to do, to every backer, it's like I thank you. It, it didn't. It failed, but I thank you again. You can store them because the next time you will launch the campaign, all the guys that backed your failed campaign can get a notice that you are restarting it. So you can restart when you are more ready or have new assets and stuff like that, right? But these first uh, three days, I would make a checkpoint. See if I got minimum 30% gives me hope. Uh, ideally, if you get 100% in the first three days, that gives you not a hope, but a, a, a promise of a success even, right? 
Uh, if you have 30%, then there's a lot of work you need to do with the 25 days later, and you need to uh, you need to be at least 70, 80 percent before the last three days mm -hmm. to make to have any kind of confidence you're gonna finish. If, if I fail or I uh, finish the campaign, do the backers get refund? Uh, if you finish the campaign, they are not charged. Okay. So it's they just kind of like make a uh, reserve the money and the campaign waits. If it's finished, the go funding goal is uh, achieved, then they are charged. Up until that moment, they, okay. there's no risk for them. Thank you very much. There you go. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Michał, and questions. thank you for all the questions. Uh, let's give Michał the round of applause.